The doctors buy drugs. You'll pull up, you'll see a nigga in the Beamer license plate, Dr. Smith on the Beamer license plate. Nigga talking about, let me get two nickel rocks. Right? So what I'm saying is, it ain't the drugs, it's the mind. Right? It's not the drugs, it's the mind. Everybody can use these shits to different. Black niggas, black niggas smoke drugs. <laughs> Look. Doctors, doctors, white people with doctors, they smoke drugs and just do open heart surgery at all. Black niggas, when we hit the rock, we automatically get a shopping cart. You, you see the different effects in the way you smoke the dope. When black niggas smoke crack, a basket appear like a Grand Theft Auto spawn. It just appear out of nowhere. Like literally out of thin air, it just pop up like a shopping cart. You ever see somebody like, damn, he only been smoking crack for three days. How he look like he was just rich. Black nigga hit the crack one time, he automatically dirty shoes, dirty basket, look like he ain't took a bath a year. Damn, bro, you been smoking dope for two days. How you? Telling you, this shit different. Not the mind though, but going into that, right? So we going into the part of like mental high, right? Like mental, getting high mentally, right? And when you when you start to realize that you could get high mentally, you want me to tell you what's the greatest high in the world? And I'm I'm gonna be honest with you, no other high in the world will feel like this high. And the high is called laughter, bro. You ever laughed so hard to where you couldn't breathe? Oh my God, this is a piece of white dye. Are you serious right now? You ever laughed so hard that literally nothing was coming out of your mouth? Like it was just... Right? And then somebody keep telling the joke and you, you trying to tell him, Stop! I'm about to die! Right? Right? Yeah, somebody almost look, my nigga. I didn't been in some laughing situations to where I literally almost died in real life. Like I almost died. No, look. When it, when you laughing and then no more words coming out and the nigga keep telling jokes, you really be like, oh, stop. Nigga, you be feeling like you about to die. <laughs> this is actual fact, bro. When you finish laughing, your you be lightheaded. Your energy be so high. And it'd it be like if a, a nigga could say the joke a little different and literally had you on the floor dead again, bro. I don't give a fuck what drug you smoke. Nothing feel better than that. Nothing. Because happiness is the highest form of, what do you call that? Uh, endorphin release or whatever the fuck you call that shit. Laughter, bro. Laughter is the highest form of pleasure that a human being could get. It feel better than sex. It feel better than everything. It's the highest form of pleasure that a human being could get. Laughter, bro. Laughter. I'm going to say it again. Laughter is the highest form of pleasure that a dopamine that's what it is, dopamine, I'm tripping, I said endorphins, I'm tripping, dopamine is the highest form of pleasure that a human being could get, laughter, so with me, right, I'm just going to tell people, natural high, right, natural highs is, natural highs, like we're talking about high, bro, I'm going to tell you when I was actually high, bro, the first time I went to the Mayan Pyramid, and I seen the Mayan pyramids with my own eyes. And I was walking through them shits and shit, the stairs and shit. And I was look, 
I was high, bro. It was a high that I couldn't, I couldn't fathom. And then I started to create a new addiction. I started to, I, I think that's when I found my new addiction, right? My new addiction became addicted to sober moments. I actually am addicted to being sober. I'm addicted to not use, I'm addicted to these, like I'm addicted to laughing. I'm addicted to laughing inside. I'm addicted to fucking seeing amazing things. I'm addicted to traveling. I'm a, like these are my addictions, bro. That is my drug. My drug that I am addicted to is accomplishments. I'm addicted to laugh. Like I like funny shit. That shit is a. That's a drug. That's what I'm addicted to. Hey. Not done yet, big dog. Bro, like, I'm telling you, like, vices, right? My vices. My advice is fight the vices, right? When you start being addicted to the happy side of life, it is literally a feeling that you cannot explain. Right? That's why, if you notice, right? If you notice in my music, in most of my music, I never rap about my problems or I never rap about pain and suffering because I don't want y'all to feel like pain and suffering. So I don't even put out that type of energy. You get what I'm saying? In my music, you ain't going to hear me say, it was hard when I was in the slums. I was doing bad. I didn't have nothing to eat. I was sad. And I want you to be sad too. That's why I made this rap just for you. Man, I made no sad ass tracks so you niggas could be in a room with headphones on, nigga. Fuck, kill yourself. Fuck that, nigga. I'm gonna do these Vlad TV interviews. I'm gonna do all this funny ass shit, comedy shit to make y'all niggas happy, bro. You can't lie. When y'all get off a of daylight live, nigga, y'all niggas go, yo. I was laughing. Daylight told me some real shit, and I was laughing in the midst of the real shit. He funny and woke. Bro, I be wanting y'all niggas to lead this motherfucker with some high energy. I don't give... It ain't even about learning, bro. Sometimes it ain't even about learning with me. And I tell y'all, I don't write this shit down. I don't prep none of this shit. I don't prep. I'm... No, gutter. You see me. Gutter, you see me. I'm in the building. I'm in there standing strong. You see me, gutter. I'm in there standing strong. What's good, my people from the other side? I'm in here. It is love, bro. And I and I learned something from this, bro. I'm going to tell you a valuable thing. I learned a valuable thing about life, bro. When, when One thing about, especially in the black man community, black men be so mentally built up, angry. Right? We grow up mentally destroyed that our energy is aggressive. So even when we not when we not present it as aggressive, we still be aggressive. So you see somebody you don't really like, you kind of stand off to the side. Or you see somebody that you don't really know, because the thing with black people, when we see people we don't know, we automatically consider them enemy instead of looking at other black people like you my brother no matter where you from. If you see another, like, and it happens to me sometimes when I'm out here in Orange County. I'll be walking down the trail, I'll see another black nigga on the trail, and I'll be like, man, this nigga, nigga I'm supposed to be the only nigga over here. Instead of actually talking to the nigga, what's good, bro? So I learned over life, right? It's time to switch that energy. And I've been switching my energy to a more, hey, brothers, 
Hey, we in this motherfucker together. And now that I move like that, bro, it makes other people go, oh, man, nigga, light in the building. It makes people feel like it changes the realm of other people. When you start walking with, hey, I'm here to unify, it changed the realm of the surroundings. So that's the type of energy I walk with. And that comes from me focusing on my positives. I don't never let my negatives drown me in a hole. Like, y'all don't know this, but when I'm, when, like, outside of these cameras in the real world, bro, it's so much shit happening. But I never present that shit in the public because I don't even want to, I don't even want to, I don't even want to, to put the fuck out Right, I don't even want to put those type of energies in the world because when you when you focus on those type of energies, right, you allow demons to exist. I learned a valuable thing about demons. Demons feed off negativity. A demon can only attack you if you have a gap in your heart that has a form of negativity. Demons are attracted to negativity, so a demon can only attack you. A demon, I'm going to say this again, a demon can only attack you as if you are thinking negative or you have some form of negativity or a grudge or something inside of your heart. That's the only way they could attack because they have something to hold on to. If you are all positives, they can't even grab you. They can't even come around you. When you live your life completely positive, free, positive and free of negativity, demons can't even come around you. They stay far away from you. You know what they'll do? They'll talk shit from the other side of the computer and go, man, I can't fuck with him. He weird. That's what demons do. They'll just talk shit from afar. Yeah, I'm, I ain't gonna go over there, man. I don't want to be seen with him. Oh, cool. Stay over there. But yeah, like I was saying, right? My fault. My fault. I got a call. Wait, am I in the midst now? No. No, like what's now? When you when you walk through the world with this positive energy like that, you have nothing to worry about. And I've been testing this theory, right? Right? I've been testing this theory by putting myself in environments that I'm not supposed to be in. I'm a, I'm a daredevil. Whether y'all want to accept it or not, I'm a daredevil. And it's a lot of things that I'm not afraid of because I'm willing to die for a better cause. And I keep telling y'all, when you're willing to die for a better cause, you protect it. That man upstairs or whatever you want to call him, God or whatever, you'll actually live life like the book of Eli. You can't be touched when you walk with a real purpose until it's your time to go. When it's your time to go, it's your time to go. But you ain't going to never go until your mission is complete. So when you understand that, and when you understand those ways of living. So I, I used to be afraid. And then, and then I started to test myself. I started to go, you know what? Pull up to these situations that you know you ain't supposed to be in. You know it's very hazardous for you. Pull up. And I used to.